Now that we have some callbacks, let's start doing some tasking and seeing what some of the cool things are we can do. So we have a Poseidon callback here and that's dead and a new atfel callback from a Mac OS machine. So let's issue an initial task to maybe uh, list some applications. So see here, it went up, it's submitted. If we switch to another tab, whenever it actually gets picked up and responses sent in, you'll see that we now have a badge notification. So we know that there is something new happening here. We can click over here, it'll automatically get uh, hidden away. And you can see here that our output is in this kind of nice table format with a lot of information here. And we can see here that we have terminal as a highlighted process. So what is this, what, what's happening here, and how can you leverage this in your operations? So this is actually a browser script that's going through and modifying structured output. If we look here at the completed message, this is actually a kind of drop up message where you can select some other components. The thing we're gonna look at now is this disable browser script, and you can see the raw output that is sent back from the agent. So this is a pretty print formatted JSON. You can see information. It's an array of dictionaries with all the information that we might want. So that is the raw output. If we click enable browser script, we can now see that it's this table format. So where is this? What's happening? How can we use this? Because maybe right now it's highlighting terminal as a suspicious process for us, but maybe we also want to highlight I don't know, that Google Chrome is running. So if we come up here to global configurations, there's a browser scripts tab, C click it and you can see all the different browser scripts that you have associated with your account. So they're broken out by type. Uh, so you can see the Poseidon ones, you can sort here the Atfel ones, the Atlas ones, Poseidon. You'll have it for all the different agents that support browser scripts. For each one, you can see whether it's tied to a specific command. So this one is specifically the ls command on the Atfel agent. Uh, some of them are more support scripts. So you can see here, um, a lot of them have these create table support scripts because this is something that's not tied to a specific command, but multiple commands might want to change their output into a table so it's easier to read. You can see who created the script, when it was created. This here is a pretty interesting aspect of if it's in effect or not. You can deactivate any of these scripts at any time and you will never have the modified version presented to you. Instead, you'll just see the raw output every time. Uh, you can also have the lead of an operation take their version of a script. Maybe I have a list app script that I prefer and I want everybody in the operation to use it. They can then force that across the operation uh, here with the apply across operation. And even if you as another operator have your own script, mine will supersede it and you'll see the output the way I formatted it. Makes it a nice way so you don't have to rely on each individual operator to make the same changes. You can kind of broadly apply it to everybody that, that's in the operation. So we want to look at the list apps browser script, kind of see what's going on and modify it to also do something for Google Chrome. So we'll go ahead and click the actions here and do an edit script. So we can see here if we make the screen larger, you can see here, this is just JavaScript. It's going through, iterating through the responses, looking for each of the keys and saying, okay, if the name of the application is one password, if it includes term, snitch, snack, these sorts of things, then modify the row color. So we'll go ahead and add our own in here. Just copy this, make a new row, and say if it includes Chrome, we'll also, we'll make it blue. You can see here, this is adding in all the different information. You can even add information per cell, not just per row, modify it to kind of stand out, have clickable areas, all that sort of stuff. And down here at the bottom, we have the, we're calling that support create table script and passing in our rows and column headers and how big each thing should be to say, go ahead and create us a, a table for this. So we'll go ahead and hit submit. And now you can see script updated and you can see here user modded. This means that this script is not the same one that the payload type itself supplied as part of its initialization. It's something that you yourself have modified.
You can always, once you've done that, a new thing will appear here, revert all changes, and you can revert back to the initial version that the payload type itself supplied. So now that we have a slightly different version, let's go ahead and uh, zoom back out and go to the active callbacks. So we can see here, again, our list apps. If you refresh the page, all the tasks will collapse back up and you will not have the output stored with it. This is kind of a speed efficiency improvement thing going on. If you click the plus button, it'll load the output and display it to you. So you can see here, now we have Google Chrome is highlighted blue for us. So it's just an easy way to make these kind of modifications to make it easier to present more information to the operator. And you have complete control over this. If you're using the support script for create tables, all these are um, sortable. You can um, look and see what's going on there. Terminal is the frontmost application, all that sort of information is kind of, kind of readily available to you. So that's browser scripts in a nutshell. But one other thing I want to point on is comments. So this is super helpful as you go through and do operations, not just alone, but with other operators. You can have this comment field, which applies to different tasks that you create. And so let's make a new comment on this specific task that says, might want to watch out, the user is running terminal. So we don't know what's in that terminal application that they're doing, but hey, you know, terminal is running, that might be suspicious, maybe there's uh, an admin on here, who knows, something to kind of look out for. So we'll go ahead, hit that, and now you see here there's this little speech bubble icon. So this means that there is a comment associated with this task. So if we click that, it'll go ahead and pop up here and say, you know, mythic admins comment, and here it is. You can always toggle these and see what they are. Super helpful to go through and uh, kind of tag things throughout an operation. Now, as you go through and you have weeks or maybe months of an operation, how do you find all this and aggregate it back together? You made a comment once on this second comment of the operation and you're trying to find it, you know, three weeks down the road. How do you do that? Well, if you go up into the operational views and go into search, you can actually search via regex across all of the responses in an operation, all the command parameters that you've typed, all the commands that you've issued, the comments that may have been added into any task, any of the file browsing data, you can even search all the event log data, lots of things that you can search across. So if we just search right now for comments, we won't apply any regex, so we'll just find all of them, and we can hit search. Bam, right here, you can see we have our one task with a comment added. You can also limit this down to which operators you want to search across their comments, all this sort of information, and you can use regex, regex for it as well. You can also go through and look at the responses. So say we were going through an operation, and we're like, oh, there was something that happened where they, I know they saw Chrome. Where was that? Well, let's just search Chrome in all the responses, and you can see here it pulls this up because we had Google Chrome in here. And this will load up all the data. As you saw, it's the raw data. It also loads the browser scripts and all the comments. It's everything that's associated with it right there. So you can kind of see everything in one handy spot. So we'll go ahead and close out this video just talking about browser scripts, comments, and the ability to search.